Well, the government has moved to torpedo claims that 5G technology is linked to the coronavirus as conspiracy theorists fight against and in some cases vandalise works to implement the high-speed internet. Joining me now is Minister for Communications, Cyber Safety and Arts, Paul Fletcher. Paul, thanks for joining us on Sky News across Australia tonight. Take us through some of these coronavirus conspiracy theorists and what they're actually been up to and why coronavirus is not linked to 5G. Yeah, good to be with you, Peter. And look, there is unfortunately a scare story going around that there's some kind of linkage between coronavirus and 5G mobile phones and mobile base stations. It's completely baseless. But unfortunately, we've seen in the UK and in New Zealand so-called activists attacking mobile phone towers, in some cases uh, burning them down. There's been a, a suspected case of something similar here in Australia, it hasn't yet been confirmed. And we've seen in Byron Bay, for example, activists, again so-called activists, um, objecting to 5G base stations being built and somewhat disappointingly the local council, which has a heavy Greens uh, component to it, uh, giving some support to these crazy views. Look, it's important to be very clear that, first of all, 5G uses fundamentally the same uh, mobile uh, technology, certainly the same uh, radio, broadly the same radio frequencies as earlier generations of mobile uh, going all the way back to analogue amps in the 1980s. Um, and secondly, that mobile phone safety has been very carefully studied, very extensively researched over many decades. So the issue is that all phones and mobile networks uh, emit uh, electromagnetic energy and the question is what health effects does that have? It's been very extensively studied, no adverse health effects ever found through any of the generations of mobile technology and 5G operates in some of the same frequency bands as earlier uh, generations of mobile technology. Uh, it's important to understand that we've got a very rigorous safety framework in Australia, what's called ARPANSA, the Australian Radiation Protection and Nuclear Safety Agency, which I might add doesn't even sit in my portfolio, it sits in the health portfolio. They set the limits which all mobile operators and all mobile networks must comply with. The typical amounts of energy being emitted from a 5G mobile phone will be uh, one one hundredth of the limits, a tiny fraction of the limits. And the typical amount of energy being emitted from a mobile phone, a 5G mobile phone, is similar to what's emitted from familiar household devices like a baby monitor or a microwave oven. So look, it is complete nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. There is no uh, linkage between 5G and adverse health effects. There's certainly no linkage with coronavirus. The Australian uh, Chief Medical Officer made that point very clearly just the other day. But unfortunately, we do have some people who are sufficiently physical damage to mobile phone base stations. And the consequence could well be that an Australian who, for example, needs to call triple O to get an ambulance to a car accident um, is not mm. able to make that call because a mobile phone base station has been disabled by one of these so-called activists. Yeah, and that's, that's the concern, isn't it, Minister? I mean, uh, you know, I know there are heavy penalties attached to this, and those who are uh, thinking of engaging in that sort of behaviour should be very, very careful. Let's switch gears, Minister, to this uh, ACCC. Uh, they've released a concepts paper today for this mandatory code that will exist between... Uh, tech giants such as Google and Facebook and local news media. They'll be exploring issues from what constitutes news and quality journalism to how a bargaining model, remuneration and enforcement might work. This is a big, big issue. I know you're across it uh, in minute detail. What does this concepts paper today indicate in this ongoing process? Well, as you rightly say, it is an ongoing process. So it started, in fact, in 2017 when then Treasurer Scott Morrison asked the ACCC, which is our competition regulator, to look at the so-called digital platforms, Facebook and Google, and what impact are they having on Australian media and on competition. Now, these platforms, as we all know, are huge. 
Over 19 million Australians use Google every month. Over 17 million use Facebook. So they're very, very pervasive and powerful in our economy. And one of the issues the ACCC focused on was that these platforms will use content which is generated by Australian media businesses. It might be News Corp, it might be Nine Entertainment Limited, it might be Seven West Media. And so, for example, it might be a 90-second video clip from the Nine News which goes into a Facebook feed. Or it might be that somebody puts in a search term into their search engine, um, COVID-19 uh, cases today, and that takes them to, for example, a News Corp newspaper. Now, the point is that the ACCC highlighted that this is content which it costs money to produce, and yet there's no agreed arrangement between Facebook and Google on the one hand and Australian media businesses on the other as to um, whether there's any remuneration, any payment for the use of that content. And indeed, the ACCC said there is a bargaining imbalance you know, it's basically very hard for the Australian media businesses to even get an appointment to have a meeting with the digital platforms. So back uh, in December last year, the government accepted the recommendation from the ACCC in that digital platforms inquiry that there ought to be a code regulating the relationships between the Australian media businesses and the digital platforms. Now, about a month ago, Treasurer Josh Frydenberg and I announced that the government had arrived at a decision that we wanted that accelerated. Rather than it being a voluntary code, as we had originally accepted the ACCC's recommendation on, we've now arrived at the view that we think it should be a mandatory code, that's to say it's backed by the force of law, and we've asked the yeah. ACCC to accelerate the process so that it produces a draft code by July. There'll then be uh, the chance for stakeholders to comment on that before a final code comes into force. So the ACCC today issued a concepts paper which is essentially part of that process of developing that mandatory code. It's got a whole series of practical questions in it. For example, when we talk about this code dealing with news, do we just mean uh, news about what happens in Parliament or what happens in our courts or do we also include news about sure. celebrities? Um, so a lot of detailed questions being considered in this concepts paper, the ACCC asking for some feedback, helping it on its job of developing this mandatory code. Sure. Well, Paul Fletcher, it is a big issue, as you know, and I'm sure that you're across the entire spectrum of exactly what uh, uh, journalism and uh, journalism uh, employers are hoping to, uh, that they'll get out of this. So thank you very much for joining us tonight on Sky News Across Australia. I really appreciate your time. Thanks, Pat.